Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. The third topic in Chapter 6, Diet and Energy Sources. As always, we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam, and today you need to be able to outline the functions of carbohydrates, fats and proteins in providing energy, describe which foods are sources of the different nutrients, and explain how food sources contribute to energy produced for different activities. How does a balanced diet provide the energy our bodies require to work, exercise and recover? A balanced diet is one that gives your body all the nutrients it needs to function correctly and in the right proportions. Nutrients are substances in food that our body needs to process in order to survive and grow, and although we need to consume several different nutrients to be healthy, the vast majority of our diet is made up of just four. These major nutrients are called macronutrients, and we'll study the characteristics of each in order and take a look at their roles within the body. Carbohydrates are the sugars, starches, and fibers found in fruits, grains, and vegetables. They typically make up a big portion of the diet, and their main role is to provide the body with energy. In topic 4.1, we learned that carbohydrates are broken down by digestion into smaller molecules called glucose, which is the body's preferred fuel source. The glucose is used to produce energy, or ATP, via both aerobic and anaerobic respiration, and are found in foods such as fruits, bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, and anything that contains sugar. Carbohydrate sources often contain fiber as well, which is the indigestible substance that helps to regulate digestion. Fats are our second macronutrient and are a rich source of energy that serves a range of functions within the body. Fats actually provide over two times the energy contained within carbohydrates and can easily be stored for later use. Fat sources include fatty meats, egg yolks, avocados, nuts, butter, cooking oils and cheese. Next we have proteins, which are the building blocks of life found in every cell within the human body. Proteins typically make up around 15% of our dietary intake and are broken down into smaller molecules called amino acids. These amino acids can be used to repair damaged muscle cells, meaning protein is particularly important for athletes recovering after training or competition. Protein sources include meat, dairy products, beans, eggs, fish and nuts. Our final macronutrient is water, which has a number of important functions. It assists in removing waste products from the body, helps to regulate body temperature, and is the main component of blood, making it responsible for transporting oxygen and other nutrients. Although drinks are the most obvious source of water in our diet, it can also be found in watermelon, soups, and various fruits and vegetables. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with the term calorie as a measure of energy contained within our food. The word calorie is actually short for kilocalorie, and the amount of energy we require from our diet is determined by a number of factors. Teenagers usually need to consume more calories than adults to support their growth. People who work behind a desk require less energy than those with active professions, and males generally need more than women. Your energy requirements will also change day to day based on your activity levels, as when you exercise, your muscles burn additional calories. When we consume more calories than the body uses, we store the additional energy as fat, leading to weight gain and a number of associated health issues, including heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Equally, if someone wishes to lose weight, they need to burn more calories than they consume, which can be achieved by reducing their intake or eating less, increasing their activity levels by exercising more, or both. But what if we want to maintain our current body weight? To achieve this, we need to be in a state of energy balance, where our dietary intake is matched by calories burned. By reading food labels, we can keep track of the energy in our food and make sure we don't consume too much. Some athletes need to consume a huge amount of energy in their diet to make up for the calories burned through training and competition. Michael Phelps, the most decorated swimmer of all time, famously consumed up to five times as many calories as an average male just to achieve a state of energy balance. You know by now that the main source of energy within the body is glucose, which comes from the digestion of carbohydrates. Glucose can be used to produce energy through aerobic and anaerobic respiration, but any that isn't immediately used is stored in the liver and muscle cells in a form known as glycogen. This glycogen can then be broken down and released when energy demands go up, meaning athletes have a consistent supply to call upon. 
Now that we've covered our first two learning objectives, all that remains is to apply your knowledge of energy balance and the macronutrients to a sporting context. Endurance athletes such as marathon runners consume large quantities of carbohydrates to provide energy over long durations. They use a strategy called carbohydrate loading, whereby they increase their carbohydrate intake in the week before competition to maximize glycogen stores in the muscles. Protein is particularly important after training or competition as damaged muscle fibers need to be repaired, while athletes who rely on strength and body mass, such as rugby players, use protein to achieve hypertrophy or muscle growth. Gymnasts and jockeys may reduce their calorie intake before competition to become lighter and more agile, while those who exercise for long durations or in the heat need to make sure they drink plenty of water to replace that loss through sweating and avoid dehydration. You have just covered everything you need to know on topic 6.3, diet and energy sources. Double check that you understand everything you need to and come back next time for lesson four on the components of fitness. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.